focus, focus, focus on Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I'm shortly going to be uh, joined, hopefully, uh, God willing, by Brother James White. And um, when James comes on, probably just do a little bit of an introduction of how our Father in Heaven brought us together for this Kingdom Connection, which was um, not, not too long ago. I'll be able to check back on my, uh, on my messenger. And then we're going to be talking and sharing, led by the Spirit, about our own journeys, in particular in relation to our personal relationship with Jesus Christ and our focus on Jesus Christ. I was led to uh, message James earlier to ask if he would like to come and join me on, um, on a live discussion because as I was doing a Facebook live a good few hours ago it was turning into one of those fairly long Facebook lives and in, in stark contrast to to myself and, and typically these longer longer Facebook lives that I do I think I first saw James all part of God's will and God's plan and this kingdom connection. I don't know if I saw James post something on, on a Facebook group potentially that I might have been in. And, in, and he just, I think he'd just done a Facebook Live. Or I'd seen him comment on something and I was led to click into his profile and I saw that he'd just recently done a Facebook Live. So I, I started to watch the Facebook Live and I, it immediately struck me that it was only, I think, one or two minutes long, which... Um, I'm certainly not used to in terms of when I'm doing Facebook live messages. And it was a message that immediately resonated with me. James is a man of God. He is on fire. He is filled with the Holy Spirit. He is walking in, in faith, by faith, not by sight. And I'm just immediately connected to him. I just knew that there was a purpose. It was a kingdom connection. And, um, and so I think I think sent a message to James asking if he's if he's good to catch up uh, to connect up and maybe we could have a, a chat and a video chat and we've since had some um, a few conversations um, I think we had like quite a long video chat a few weeks ago and um, and so when James joined my uh, a Facebook live I did a few hours ago he joined after me having been discussing and talking about what what how the Lord was speaking to me about the absolutely crucial importance of focusing on Jesus. Focus, focus, focus on Jesus. So with this announcement by Facebook starting tomorrow, I think it is, um, that anyone that is seen as posting what they describe as misinformation to do with the jabs and, and related things, that, um, that your account could get blocked and, and banned off Facebook. So with the ministry, the Become Born Again ministry that uh, our Father has um, has bestowed upon me earlier on this year, this, this flourishing ministry, I just give God all the glory, praise and honour. Facebook is crucial. Facebook is key to, um, to, to the ministry. It's key to delivering messages the way I do to people around the world that follow and join and interact and engage. And so knowing that I share from my heart and I share messages of truth about what's going on in the world. James is just joining now. Hello, brother. Hey, brother. How are you? I'm very well. How are you doing? Yeah, praise the Lord. W wonderful, thank you. Yes, yes. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So just so you know, I'm just, I've just been explaining briefly, I've um, just been on for a few minutes, just explaining briefly how we connected up, Kingdom Connection, I think it was, I think I saw your name on a, um, on a group post or something, I clicked onto your profile, you know, very quickly could see that you're a man of God and you just, I think you just recently, you've done a Facebook Live that day and I was just sharing that it was, it was just like a little short one or two minute video and I watched it, it resonated with me. 
I was kind of captivated by what you were able to pack into that that message you know like one or two minutes what, what however long it was and I'm often doing longer lives so I was just saying that we connected up I sent you a message and we you know we it's a kingdom connection we had a video call a few weeks ago and then I was just up, up to the point of where I was sharing that live earlier on this evening and about Facebook and the censorship and the you know they, they, they're saying that if you posting things about jabs and things like that moving forward you know misinformation whatever they, they might describe it as that you could get banned off facebook and so as i was delivering that message um on live and and the lord was speaking to me and it was it was a message to me saying paul like just focus on jesus focus on talking about jesus focus on glorifying god talk about worship share scriptures you know share testimonies and and stop you know, stop, stop talking now about the, you know, what's going on in the world in terms of the agenda and, and the role and everything, because it's all God's, you know, God is sovereign, God is in control. And so it was a real, it was, it was God's message to me. And, and I'm sure to other people, he's kind of warning us, this is God's warning to us to focus on Jesus and to, you know, things that we could describe as the work of the enemy. God has allowed that to happen and God works in all things for good for those that love God and those that live according to his purpose for them. So, so as I was delivering that message about focusing on Jesus, um, that you came on the live, I saw that and you popped up and you, you did a comment and, and I think it was actually, it was just cause a few minutes later, I just went, I just stayed on the live, but I went to the toilet and it was whilst I was on my little toilet break that, that the Lord was speaking to me and saying, I brought James onto this live because James and, and how you deliver your messages and your relentless focus on Jesus and walking like Jesus, talking like Jesus. Um, it was, you know, God was saying to me that, that Paul, I'm, I'm showing you kind of what I want you to be doing in terms of, you know, just having that total focus on, on the things above and not the things here on earth. And, uh, and so, yeah, here, here we are. It, um, I just so I up, or are we on Facebook right now? We are. Yeah. Because I can't see anything. All I can see is the Zoom call. So thank you for letting me know that. I wasn't sure if we was having a private conversation or we was on live. So praise God for that. Um, yeah, and this should be on. If you just do you want to, if you want to just check um, if you want to share this, because this live won't be connected up with your... Um, I wasn't able to tag you when I set it up from Zoom to Facebook. So... I can see what I can do. Yes, yeah, so if you go on to mine, to Facebook. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can see it. And then you can share it to your to your post. Okay. All right, brilliant. Brilliant. Should be should be fine now. Um, not sure how this will work because I usually stream directly from Facebook, so so you seem to be a bit more techy than I I am on Facebook at the moment. <laughs> so I think well, in, uh, individually, if it's just me, then I do yeah, I do lives typically from my phone. Um, but when it's when it's with someone else, um, you can sometimes add someone to a Facebook live from from your phone. But if depending on the compatibility of the phone. Just doing it through Zoom, it means that obviously anyone, you know, people can just download Zoom and then and then I just stream it. So um yeah, pray, praise the Lord, hallelujah, um, for, for our kingdom connection. Um do you want to um, you know, as, as the spirit leads, we, this is we this is all going to be about focusing on Jesus. Um, do you want to just maybe for people watching, um, who you know, probably most people won't know you, certainly from you know, from who who've seen it for myself, that just maybe a, a little bit about your self testimony, uh, maybe just with what, however the Lord leads, just so people have a have, a, have an understanding of where you've come from, where, where your life was. Yeah, yeah. So, so just just to quickly prompt those that are watching, I see that that uh, brother Paul, uh, mighty man of God himself, um, posted up about me being a mighty man of God, and I just wanted to just really just alliterate something that that is important for each and every person to really understand that we're weak individuals that need a mighty God, you know, as, as our brother Ryan Art Bonke would say. Um, and it's also important that we also understand that, see, with God, we can do all things. But see, by ourselves, we're constantly full. And that's kind of 
my testimony in a nutshell. But if I, if I was to elaborate on it a little bit more, it would be the fact that I myself came from a very broken background, struggling with identity um, for, for many years, from, from, from the, as, as far back as I can remember, trying to find it in all these different patterns that life bring you into to find you it find all these different roads that life take you down I, I was a a a serial gamer from a young age trying to find my identity in that and then as I grew older I tried to find my identity in being the class clown in school um then becoming really destructive in school I then got myself around crowds that I shouldn't have got involved with drug use and then from the age of 15, I left my house from a very young age, still seeking identity in a way um, that I could find in the world, you know, and see, that's the trouble with the, the youth of today, uh, a youth being people younger than me and people being the same age that I am, because I consider myself to be youth. I'm only 27. Um, we have all these constructs that through television, through music, through um through the, the the lifestyles of the streets that really try to teach us how we should be or how society should accept us or how we should find our identity in a nutshell. And see, I was someone that go, went down the roof of street crime and growing up in London, finding my identity in being praised by the older people that was involved with street crime, being praised by the criminality that I was involved, involving myself into, being praised for setting someone up to be robbed at a young age and being the mastermind behind it all. And see, what I found in these scenarios, these identities that the world likes to breathe into you is that you may find the fulfillment in that identity for a period of time or a time that is limited. But what will happen is, is that that fulfillment will end up dying away. And as that fulfillment ends up dying away, you're then finding something else to find that fulfillment in. And that's something that the enemy does in every single person's life growing up to pull us away from where identity is meant to be found. And that's in Christ. So I'm someone that sort of went along that path and attempted to find my identity in all these different avenues. And where that led me to is street crime, knife crime, owning firearms, getting involved with selling drugs in nightclubs and eventually get down that spiral of identity crisis. I found myself a crack in heroin. And see, that brought me to my knees on another level because what I was doing is I was living my life for the weekend of being that top dog in the nightclubs that sold drugs, that had all of the nightclub security under my thumb and living this alter ego that I used to live under. But really on the weekdays, I was a very broken individual that was just taking crack and heroin and then supporting my habit through the weekend of earning the money that I had at the weekend. So I was in this vicious cycle. They went round and round and round and round until eventually I got myself into a position where my habit was not being fulfilled from the money that I made at the weekend for all of that was being consumed. I got to the point where I had to find myself beginning to steal from people, beginning to rob from people to keep myself ticking over for them two days waiting for the weekend after I spent all of that money. And not only that, then trying to find more money to buy the drugs, to sell drugs. And it just got into a vicious circle until eventually one day I remember being on heroin and I was looking underneath the crack of my door. And I was, bear in mind, for the age of 15 onwards, I was always being preached the gospel. The Lord was reaching out to me from all different saints, from long and wide, all over the UK, wherever I went, there was always someone to tell me about Jesus. And there was always this something inside of me that always knew that there was truth in what was being said, but the lack of interest and, and willingness to receive what was being said, just that little spark of knowing and it's true. So one day when I was on heroin, I was looking underneath the door and I was looking at my looking, looking at the crack of the door. And I was like, listen, God, if you're real, Jesus, if you're real, walk through that door right now. I said, walk through that door right now and help me in this scenario that I'm helped in. And um, in this circumstance, I know there's many people that have encountered Christ in these kind of ways. But in this circumstance, it never happened. And it really made me resentful towards God because I thought God turned his back on me. And I'm ready, reading all these uh, testimonies of how God's radically changed people, how God's done all this. And I thought, what? So what's wrong with me? Because I was always considered the black sheep. And that was something that the enemy always lied to me about. He always kept me in that captivity of being the black sheep of the family that no one really cared about. And even in these scenarios like this, like I was looking underneath the crack of the door, you're the black sheep. God don't care about you. The lies that the enemy feeds you to try and keep you in Egypt um, and Egypt being captivity is what I'm saying here. So after that, what happened is, is I've really become resentful and angry on another level than I ever was. And it really 
brought me to my knees because of a week before that, I actually stole, uh, robbed a young person who was working for someone who was quite high up in the drug game. And I robbed them at knife point. Um, and when I got this hatred, I, I, I grew into this insanity mindset that I thought if I called the top dog and told him that I wanted to arrange a payment for me to give him back, but really go there with the intention of robbing him, that I'd be successful. And this was a form of insanity because of if I was to look at that scenario now, I would definitely see that this was something that was really crazy to do. And it could have ended my life, which it nearly did. So what I did is I went to meet this person um, on this journey. I was It wasn't really present at this time because the chemicals that I was taking at the and I got there and when I got there the man behind the till who knew who I was drew a knife off the off of the till and because I was so insane at this time I told him to put the knife on back on the wall and call his boss now really in that moment my life could have been ended but I was so insane that I think the person behind the till notified that there wasn't something right with me so he called his boss and let him know and at the time I was sitting there really in this state of mind, like I didn't really care. And after about half an hour come, about five men ran through the door, locked all the doors, and beat me with tomahawks and stabbed me in my leg and poured uh, oil all over me, saying that they was going to do all different kinds of stuff to me. And over the course of four hours, they got my house keys, raided my house and beat me to a pulp where my head was really in a deformed shape. But the whole time there was this peace on me. And at the time we know that it says in the scriptures that God will grant you peace that surpasses all understanding. But at this time, I didn't have that sort of understanding uh, of the scriptures. Um, so I had this peace that didn't really make sense in this scenario. But there was always this understanding that I was going to get out of the scenario. But if we were to look at this situation by sight, it didn't really look that way. Um, and it was manifesting on the way that I was behaving in front of these gentlemen that I knew that I was going to be okay because of, of course, there was this adrenaline pumping unsurety about what was going to happen but there was this sort of fearlessness in me that I knew I was going to be okay and over the four course of four hours I was beaten quite badly and then an opportunity rose where I could get out and I ended up running down the street and bear in mind that this time I'm from head to toe naked covered in blood because I got stripped down and everything um, and I, I ended up getting back to my house getting to my friend's house and collapsing at his door he ended up getting in contact with family members that ended up coming to me and escorting me to the hospital. And I was in a very bad way. I was in uh, resuscitation. They was watching me because I had bleeding on the brain um, and I wasn't really in a good place and I was throwing up blood and I was so deluded in the mindset that I was looking at my mother while I was throwing up blood, telling her that it was, it was Ribena that I drank earlier on in the day. Not because of, I was trying to make her feel better because I was in a place of insanity that I just didn't really understand what was going on due to the, to the chemical intake I'd say that I took that day and through all of this just to sort of fast forward the story a little bit I ended up getting moved to a place called Wilsden Junction in London and it was beautiful because of this is where my journey began I didn't straight away become clean in this moment of moving to Wilsden Junction I ended up getting even worse I ended up like really knocking on people's doors pretending that everything was all over the place and I needed assistance and when getting into the house stealing stuff out of the house and leaving and it was like it was either going to be deaf or jail for me, the ways that I was moving. I was remember times of when I was in Wilson calling my family, telling them I was destitute, screaming down the phone to them, demanding money from them to get back to where I was. And it was all a, an elaborate lie to continue the use of drugs that I needed to take at the time to fill this uh, satisfaction, this void within me that we all know now that can only be found with God. Until it brought me to a place where I was literally in this flat, on drugs and I got down on my knees and I screamed out to God I said listen I've had enough now God it weren't I wasn't asking for an encounter I wasn't asking for him to walk through the door this time it is very different I was just asking for help um and I think in that particular I was in that broken and contract spirit that he will not despise see because when I was asking for that experience I wasn't asking for him to come and take uh, help me I was asking him to walk through my door and it was a very different place. It wasn't a place of humility or broken and contrite. It was a place of just wanting an interaction with God and not asking for help in the scenario. And see, it was the very next day that I come off of all the, ca all, all the drugs, it come off all of the chemicals, everything, and my life began to dramatically change. But see, it was for three days. I didn't really understand what was going on. 
I could see that there was a difference inside of me. I could see that there was a different desire in me. I could see that there was a different, uh, there was a wanting for change in me and that the drug stopped, but I couldn't place my finger on it. I was quite confused for three days until three days later, I was given a revelation of who intervened into my life. So I ended up going to these drug meetings for a little while, doing the, 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 the instructions that all the people around me gave me. And it was within about three, four months of being in the meetings that, that the Lord was really telling me, you ain't got to be here. He said, I'm all that you need. He was what he was telling me. And I was in a very fearful place thinking, well, if I don't have, I was crutching on these meetings and not really putting my faith entirely in Christ. And Christ was telling me, come, just follow me. And then when I left is when I found true liberty to really find that everything you need is found at the cross, you know, and that God just wants us to be in a place like Christ was oneness with the father. And see, when we have oneness with the father, it means that we will really apply that scripture when it says that acknowledge him in all of your ways and he shall make all of your path straight. See, if we acknowledge God in everything that we do, why does he make our path straight? Because when we have a path that is straight, we're not going to have any bends, any turnings that take us down a road that we can't see down. We're going to see a road that is straight ahead of us. So any danger that is coming, we'll see it coming because we're acknowledging him and he's directing our paths to be straight. And see, that's why focus on God is important. That's why we must focus constantly on Christ, because we need grace in the ways that we live. And I know there's probably some people on here right now that are listening to this story and thinking, wow, God, but, but James, I don't suffer with drug addiction. But see, drug addiction is just another form of the flesh, another form of the lust of the flesh. Some people it might be pornography, masturbation, um, fighting, anger, uh, lust, all of these things. They're just lust of the flesh. You know, it just forms in different people's lives due to the upbringing that they have, that they go down that road of the flesh. But really, it's just the lust of the flesh. And see, us by ourselves in the flesh, we cannot deal with it. We can't deal with the flesh by ourselves. We need something else that's called grace. That when the grace is imparted into us, it's then that we shall not be dominated by the flesh. We should not be dominated by sin. But see, it's always going to be a free will. It's not one of these situations that I say to you now that James is in Christ now, so everything's going to be rosy and perfect, and I'm never going to fall away because Christ has set me free. Yes, he has set me free, but there's something that's required of me that I focus on him because I know that at times the enemy comes and he tries to give you distractions. But if we allow the distractions to take our focus, then it is then the enemy can attack us and lead us down a path that the Father is not leading us down. And it is then that we will be in a vulnerable position because we're not focusing on Christ. So that's kind of my story, uh, Paul. I just thought I'd share that. And uh, yeah, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, just to know, for, for, for people watching, I just well, something I just want to share there. So I, um, that, that place of where you were at, um, you know, when you were being beaten to a pulp and yet you there was something about you kind of, you, you were set that day you were saved so this was before you, your encounter with christ before you gave your life to jesus and and for anyone that's watching this that has been that that, that can reflect on their life now and know that they've been close to having their life ended whether it's by themselves or by other situations circumstances they're in i just want i just want everyone to know that you are still here, still standing, listening to us talking right now because of the grace of God, because of the mercy of God, and because of his unfailing love. Because yes. in our darkest days, in our dark valleys, and in, in, in the darkness that I had when I was on the verge of jumping off a 20, 22-story um, balcony in Vancouver about six years ago, and that voice in my head was um, was saying to me, just do it, Paul. There's no other way. There's no other way, Paul. Just, just do it. I was saved that day by the grace of God. I didn't know. I, didn't, I wasn't in prayer. I wasn't thanking God. I wasn't reading the Bible or anything. But it was God's will and God's plan that I wasn't going to do that and that God was going to lead me to a place where two and a half years ago, I surrendered my life to Jesus. And, and so this is just, this is a message for everyone that whatever you've been through in your life, whatever dark valleys, whatever storms you might be going through in your life right now, know that you are still here, still standing. First of all, because, because God formed you and God created you and brought you into the world and the Lord has got plans for your life, plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. And that, um, and that you're watching this video, you, you're watching this live, you're hearing this right now, because this is, the Lord is speaking to you through this. He, he's, he's wanting to teach you things. He's wanting to break down some of the barriers, maybe prideful barriers that, that have been in your life because of life experiences, anger, resentment, bitterness, rage, resent, you know, unforgiveness. We've all had trials and tribulations. And, um, and I just praise God hallelujah, and say hallelujah for James, for your story and your testimony, because it's, what I, the way I see this now, knowing what you're doing for the kingdom now, since I've connected with you and I've been seeing what you've been posting, that um, 
the, the, the significance of the battles and trials and tribulations you went through is, is commensurate with, or it's in, it's in balance with, with the calling that's upon your life. And, and there's a calling on every single person's life that's watching, even if people don't realize it. Um, and it's, and it's profound to, when you, when you go from the ident your identity being in the world and your identity being in, in what people have told you about yourself or what your, what your own mind thinks about yourself. And, you know, you just, uh, there's a song called you say by Lauren Daigle and, you know, the lyrics say, um, am I, am I more than just the sum of all my highs and lows or ups and downs? And that's how we can live our life when be before we've um, been saved by the grace of God, you just in you, you're just battling yourself, aren't you? And that the battle, the battle of our own mind and the battle of our sin nature and our flesh, as you said, as you said, brother, that it is only through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, when we open our heart and we're saved by the grace of God and we come into relationship with Jesus, it is only then that the power of our sin nature and our fleshly desires can be can be can be crushed. They're still there, but we've got the power of the Holy Spirit working working in us. And I love what you said there about the paths and about, you know, keeping your path straight. Scriptures tells us that, uh, that God straightens out all our crooked paths. And, it, and if I think where my life was two, three years ago, like the different, the different aspects of my life, there was crooked paths all over the show. I had, I had an addiction to porn. I had a, a marriage that was, that was not where it needs to be whatsoever. I was battling with mental health. I've got, I've got a fear of business failure. I've got, a, I'm not living with gratitude and I've not seen my mum for 21 years. I've not seen my dad for seven years. So you've got all these crooked paths yet to the outside world. Um, I probably would have looked like I had a picture perfect life, but my word, when you, when you peel the layers back and you actually, and you open up and or you talk to people about what's actually going on inside, both in your mind and in your heart, our mind can just be full of so much baggage from the past. And our heart can be, it can be so broken. It can be a heart of stone. We might have had our, our heart broken when we were younger. And so, yeah, and it's only Jesus. It's only Jesus that's going to heal us, that's going to redeem us. And so praise, praise God, hallelujah for, yeah your story your your and what you're doing now and do, do you want to share a bit about what you what you're being led to do when you're out and about and you're sharing these messages and they're often very short messages which are just really powerful you know you you, you praise god for the spirit just leading you to to pack in what you do on these messages do you want to just when did you start doing facebook lives is it i can't i'm not sure when you started doing them so one thing that I really want to acknowledge before everyone that's on this live stream right now, just before I answer your answer, what you just asked me, Paul, is that, see, this Christian walk is a progress. It's a progress that we're all on. And every single person along this path doesn't come into Christ and all of a sudden they have this oneness with God that is just phenomenal, that we become like Christ from the moment that we come in. We all come in with stuff, you know. It's important that we recognise that when we come to Christ, we come as we are. And God works with where we are. But one thing that he does promise is that he don't keep us where we are as long as we focus on it. It says in the scriptures, um, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, it says, uh, when the Lord starts a work in you, he will complete it onto the day of the Lord returning. And it is one of them things that we must recognize that if the Lord started something in you, he will complete it. He doesn't ever do half jobs. But see, the only requirement that we have is that we keep our eyes on him. And along the ways that if we keep our eyes on him and we're constantly seeking what his will is for our lives, he will direct us into the path of people that we need to receive something from. He will direct us into the path of those that are placed in our life to, to, to feed us and nurture us, you know. Um, but it's important that we recognize always that our eyes must remain on him, you know. When I come into Christ, I came into Christ with so much arrogance, so much uh, pride, so much self-centeredness, so much hatred in my heart so much false humility all of this stuff came in with me you know i may have been set free from addiction and all these things but there was so much that i was carrying in but see the lord is gracious in this area and he's got so much mercy that he sees these things in us and he's like you know what i can see this in you but see what he wants to do is he wants to break us down over a course of time it says in the scriptures who the lord loves he chastenates and we must not despise the chastening of the lord because he does it for our own good and see, as we come in and we come in with this stuff, he deals with this along the way if we focus on him. That is why it's important constantly not to seek strength in yourself because we're weak individuals. 
And it's okay to be weak because when we're weak, that is the perfect canvas for his strength to be imparted. So just to, I just wanted just to say that quickly, Paul, before I continue. And, I, I, and basically what the Lord's using me to do right now is that there's a lot of uh, homelessness in, in London. I'm, caused, uh, I'm called to, to, to go out on outreaches and the Lord's really given me some grace in some areas of good connection, kingdom connections. We've helped lo loads of, of homeless people on the streets with supplies that they need. And when the Lord prompts, there's been a couple of scenarios where we've been able to house some homeless people around, not just housing in London, but around some spirit filled pastors that are nurturing these people from 12 hours support a day when they've got key workers. And these are people that have come from serious identity crises like myself, you know, and sometimes I'll just be bopping down the street. And, and sometimes when you've got plans, the Lord's happy to change them plans. But along the way, of this process that I'm talking about when stuff begins to drop off of us, the whole purpose of that, and it's going to intertwine with what, what the Lord's called me to do. The whole purpose of that is to bring us back into a place of oneness, just as Christ was, just as Adam was in the garden. See, Adam in the garden was in a complete oneness with God before the fall. And when the fall happened, there was a separation that was caused and there was necessities and ways that we had to bring ourselves back into a place with God with all the sacrifices. And see, the second Adam that came, he was not born from the same seed as everyone else was. He was born from an uncorruptible seed. And that caused him to be the second Adam who was in complete oneness with God that fulfilled the law. And see, because he fulfilled it and gave us the Holy Spirit, as we go on this journey with God, Day by day, we begin to be delivered from evil, as it says in the Lord's Prayer. When the Lord told us to pray a certain way, he prayed a prayer. He told us to pray a prayer that mentioned about being delivered from evil. And see, as we're along that process of being delivered from evil, what will happen is, is that we will start to encounter this oneness with Christ that we are supposed to be in as we focus more on, Lord, on the Lord. See, what Christ had on this earth is how the Father wants us to be because what we have become in Christ. But see, it's a process. And see, as I go on my day, like right now, I'm in Devon on a mission that the Lord has led me down here. And sometimes he doesn't share entirely what he wants me to do as I'm coming down. But as we go on the path of coming down here, he starts to direct my path here and there. But it's about being willing to listen at all times and not having the whole map painted out. See, the Lord might not give you the blueprint, but he definitely has the blueprint to give you as you come down and come down being in the scenario that I'm in. But wherever the Lord's leading you, in your workplace, in any place. So. I don't really plan what I'm going to do. I don't really plan ministry. I don't really plan anything other than hearing the voice of the Lord. And that requires a place of being still. So sometimes I may be directed to do a 60 second message on a topic where he will say to me, contentment. And then I'll just be like, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to say here, but you do. So let me just start the video and I'll start speaking. And the Lord will start speaking through me. And that's how it works. Because it says in the scriptures, when, when Jesus said to some, uh, I think it was Peter that he said it to, do not worry about what you will say in that hour. For the Father in heaven will give you all that you need to say in that moment. And that's kind of a scripture I live by when I come to ministry. But it all must, always must stay in a place of secret place first and allow that secret place to flow into your life. See, I'm not a man that just gets up and does ministry because of that would be a ministry that James is doing and not God. But I'm someone that spends time with God throughout the times that I'm not doing ministry so that I'm in a position of being a son first. And then flow in ministry because it's important that we recognize that we must be in an intimacy with our father in heaven before we decide to do anything, because otherwise we're just going to be doing it in the flesh. So, as I said, sometimes I'll just go out, take a prompting from the Lord and just speak to people as I go out. If they're highlighted to me, do some videos on Facebook and just give some messages that the Lord gives me for the day. But to be honest, everything I do is by faith. It's not really planned. You know, the Lord's telling me to be in Devon for two weeks, which I'm going to be in. And then, and then I'm going to move back to go back to London. And then I'm going to go to the US because he's told me to go to the, go to New York. And this is a big step of faith because I have no reason or no idea in my mind why I'm going to New York. But I know how the Lord works with me. And when I get to New York, then he'll give me the next step. Then the step after that, then the step after that. And see, that's where the Lord wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be in a place where we have all these constructs, right? I'm going to do this for ministry and do that. He just wants us to listen to what he's saying because of our will will keep us on a path that is limited. But see his will, his will is so fruitful and so abundant that we will be in a place that is so satisfying to the soul because we're being directed by God. And who better to be directed by than the one that created all things? Amen. Amen. This is just so so much in, in what in what you're sharing here about 
the um, the the trust, like trusting in in his will, his plan. He's um, at, you know from a personal experience when the Lord sends us somewhere, um, so he you know gives us a destination that we're going to. But then sometimes how how he does it is actually it's only by sending us. So for instance, from where we live here. Um, it was, you know, last year, a beautiful encounter I had with someone. Um, and it basically, God said, like, go to Land Dudno. So we've been there before, my daughters, and, you know, great, so we're going to go. Um, I was led to do, like, a video message for who for who I was going to meet. You know, he said to me, you're going to meet someone, and, and this is a personal message for them. And so we, we set off a few hours later, and knowing it was going to be God's timing, you know, we weren't, God didn't say, get to this place by this time, it's just go here. And I just knew that there was going to be this encounter of someone, but actually it was on the way to Landudno where we ended up detouring to into Rill, which we wouldn't, I've not been to Rill for 20, 25 years, and I wouldn't have gone to Rill with my daughters. But if, if God would have said go to Rill, like I might not have received that initially because I would have been like, what? Like, you know, that, that, but, but Landudno was, you know, that, that was a more of a natural thing to go, but it was actually in Rill where he led me into the life of a lady in a supermarket who was going to commit suicide the day before. And she's been, for the last year, she's been praying to God, kind of saying, if you're real, kind of, you know, I need you in my life, because she's been through, you know, horrendous things in her life. And and on this, in this supermarket in Rill, that was, that was a divine appointment. But it, it so it used, it used Landudno to get me on this path and journey with my daughters to, to on, on the way there. And it was going to, and then the way he detoured us to Rill, it was just beautiful. So just trust it. This, yeah, it's, it's, it's having... It's the Holy Spirit. We, like without the Holy Spirit, there, there's so many Christians I know that have been going to church and they've been doing what they've been doing. They pray and you know they, they they're in home groups. They go to church on a Sunday. They might be in a spirit-led church, but but actually them themselves personally, well certainly if I reflect in the last year or two, and they, they've not been in a genuine, pure like relationship with Jesus, and and, the, and therefore the Holy Spirit's not been working through them, and they've not they're not being truly led by the Holy Spirit, and. And I would I would summarize it by saying that a lot of people in faith have been living in, and maybe there's there's people watching this, possibly, or that will watch this, that are living kind of with one foot in faith and kind of believing in in the word of God a bit and praying, or, you know, doing a few prayers, but but still having one foot in the world. But if you have one foot in the world, you're going to be distracted. You're going to be, you know, you're going to get subliminal messages coming in at you. You're going to be drawn into other things. You're going to get drawn in into the flesh. Um, and it's about surrender. It, it's I, I truly believe what God is doing in this. It's not this. It's beyond this season in this profound period of humanity. He is calling us, and he is he is opening the doorway for us to 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 come into that place of total surrender. But when we talk about the word surrender, I had a conversation with a lady about a week ago who's kind of spiritual and kind of new age. And, you know, she believes in the Bible, you know, some of the Bible and Jesus and, you know, it's about love and everything like that. But she was saying, she, she brought up about surrender and she said, I just don't, that surrender though, like, no, because I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, no, I don't see why you should have to do that because, and then she was talking from a flesh worldly point of view about, you know, if, if you surrender in a way she was describing it to say your husband or your wife but she, she, used, she brought this term in and it was basically how surrendering can lead to, and it was like a very negative thing in the flesh. I can't remember the term of it. And I just said to her, I said, but this is so different when you like, when you surrender to Jesus, like the one who surrendered his life for you, it's, it, it can seem restricting or it can seem like, oh, oh, that sounds a bit much. But as you've been describing there, brother, that like following the will of the father, following the, the leadings and promptings of the Holy Spirit and and having your crooky past straightened out and and being led like into such glorious encounters with people and, and having beautiful things happen that you couldn't even plan for. You, you couldn't recreate. It's surrender is. Do you, know, do you see what I'm meaning? Surrender in the flesh sense doesn't, it, it probably is off putting for some people, but it's the most glorious thing to do with Jesus. What does it say in the scripture? It says that those that are led by the Spirit of God will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Yeah. So it's important that we understand that once we're in a place of submission to the Father, through because of what Jesus Christ done to us, and He's opened the door by the blood of Jesus to achieve what we can with the Father, that oneness that has been offered to us, just like in the garden. That is something that can only be found because of the blood of Jesus, you know? And I see it like this. I've got this analogy that I share with people very often because of unless we got that vertical relationship with God, 
that horizontal path with people will never be there. You can't have one without the other. And it's, it's, it's important that we understand it like this, a very simple analogy that I like to use. So we can see a tap. Picture a tap in your mind, you're that tap. And see, the tap when it turns on, the twisting of the tap is your relationship with God. And see, the water that flows through is the love of God. And when we've turned on our relationship with God and that water's flowing through, that means that we're achieving the love, we're receiving, sorry, the love of God into our lives. And then because of that, the love of God can flow through us. So when we're in that place of his intimacy with God and we're demonstrating love to other people, it's not our love. We're just a tap, a vessel that it's flowing through and it's coming straight from the throne room of heaven. Does that make sense? What I mean? Yeah. And it's, that, that's so beautiful. That is in the, in the prayer that I'm often led um, to, to share with people to, to read it after me, you know, the prayer of salvation. And it's kind of, you know, it's a spirit led prayer. And, and the one that's on the ministry website, it, it talks about uh, like, it says like Jesus, you know, like I surrender my life, Jesus, you're my Lord and savior. Um, you know, I give my life to you. Like, and, and then the words typically I use are Jesus um, live in me and, and Jesus love through me. And so this is, a, as you say, no, we're, we're a vessel for, for the for the agape love of God. And and to have that that love of our fellow man, woman, child. And, and that because what that means then is and, and this is something that I think is important to share. I was I was in Blackpool about six months ago and there's so many people there that I could have spent time with and shared the good news with. You know, you can see the brokenness. You can feel the spiritual heaviness in a place like Blackpool. And there's, there's homeless people around, there's families, there's people there that, you know, just various, you know, they, they all need love, they all need, they, they're all, you know, so many people are missing the, 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 the oneness, the, the relationship with Jesus. So I, I was there with my daughters that day and, you know, saw a few people, gave a few pieces of paper out, shared the good news and stuff, but wherever, whichever way I turned, there was more people. And, and then it was, um, it was the morning after, the, when they're on the Saturday, the morning after, um, the woke up. I was going to, my daughter was going to be with the, with the mum, and uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, Paul, go back to Blackpool today. And I just, I, you know, I just knew I was going to go. I, I said to my girls, you know, I'm going back to Blackpool today. So I'm going, it's about two hour drive, but I went there and I'd been feeling such a burden like the day before. And I was thinking, you know, I'm just going to be there all day, going to loads of pieces of paper out, and I'll feel fulfilled because I'm going to, you know, maybe I'll give 100 pieces of paper out and, you know, say, you know, I'll tell 100 people Jesus loves you or something. And then, and then I've made a bit of a dent in people in Blackpool because there's so much brokenness. And um, as it turned out, the Lord led me into the life of, of, um, of one druggy, alcoholic, homeless guy. That, and it was, I had a very profound experience over a few days with this, with this man that was totally broken. So it wasn't about the number. It wasn't about quantity. It was about the one. But I've, I've shared that because when we've got the love of Jesus flowing through us, we're in relationship with Jesus we're seeing the world through the eyes of Jesus and we're seeing the brokenness. You saw people that you've never met before, you know, on the streets, driving past in the car at the supermarket, on the beach, in the, in the kebab shop, at the coffee shop, whatever, at the, at the pub, sat at the bar. You just, it's this, you see the brokenness and you, there's this spiritual like discernment that, that we have to not just see someone in the flesh and see someone, you know, you might, you might look and think, oh, it looks like they've had a bit of a hard life there's this spiritual um, discernment that, that's a gift from God to, to almost, to, yeah, to, to feel a heaviness with them. And, and that heaviness and that burden is something that, 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 that period in Blackpool that I had, I was carrying so much of a burden for, for my love of my fellow man and woman that um, people that I don't know that actually the Lord wanted to take it off me, that burden, because there's too many. If, if, if you carry that weight and burden that, of, of the world, you know, the world's brokenness, um, it was starting to weigh heavy on me and um, and praise God that because of my experience over three days in and around Blackpool with this homeless man, it was it was the Lord's way of saying to me, Paul, I no longer want you, don't be burdened, don't be burdened anymore. I'm, I've got everyone in the palm of my hand. There is a plan and a purpose. And, and in my time, you know, my, my, my plans will come to pass with people. And as that one person, as one person in Christ, uh, you know, as a man of God, as a woman of God, we... Um, yeah, there's, there's only so much physically we can do. Obviously, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. But um, but yeah, it's when we have the heart of the Father and the mind of Christ, that's when 
like for me with the last year or two, it's there's been a separation between those that have truly surrendered and that truly do have Jesus Christ living in them. And, and you know, they are kind of, um, they have surrendered to Jesus because if you have, you see the brokenness of the world, you see the darkness of the world, you've got the Holy Spirit, which leads us into all truth. Um, but you've, you, there's been a lot of people that um, have, haven't had, they, they, they've not yet got to that place of surrender. They're still living with like with sin and with self-centeredness. And as long as they're okay, they're going to follow, they're going to comply, they're going to do, you know, they're going to do what they've been doing. And um, yeah, just, but God is calling us. God is calling his people into this place of surrender. And, and for me, I've often described it as this, this separation between the dark and the light and what was like a big gray area for most people living, living just in grayscale, you know, not in Christ, not in real darkness, but the way that the way the Lord is doing things in the world, it's for me, it's just becoming such a separation between you're either going to be surrendered to Jesus and living this Holy spirit led beautiful life, you know, walking like the hands and feet of Jesus, walking in love, walking by faith, not by sight, or you're going to be still wrapped up in this world in some way, even if you go into church, you know, you're still going to be kind of getting dragged into the fear and the propaganda. So does that, how does that relate to you? What do you see the world today? What, you know, what, what, you know, as the Lord's been speaking to you about, about what he's doing in the world or, you know, what would you, what would you say? What are you seeing? So, so, so on the perspective of burden, I'd just like to really address that to a perspective because I hear your perspective and, it's a perspective that I once had, but you know, the Lord really spoke to me in this area before, you know, of course there is a strong desire and the Lord places on me from times of, 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 of the weeping prophet. I've been in that situation many times where I'm weeping about the souls that are in despair and worry and, and sorrow, but it's also important that we don't overburden ourselves with souls because of all we do is offer a message. See, we can burden ourselves to be like, how am I going to lead this person to Christ? And how am I going to get this person to understand the truth? And see, we can offer someone the truth. We, but some sow, some reap, and God waters. And if we live a lifestyle of giving people the message, but understanding that it's not up to us to save anyone, we're never going to be burdened because of when we deliver a message, that message will never return void. It says it in the scriptures. That Amen. word never return yeah. void so that is a seed planted and sometimes we may plant a seed we may not see any fruitation of that seed when we go away another person will come along and then that may be uh, the lord of watered that they're gonna harvest it or it may just be another seed gets planted and before you know it there's a crop that is nice and ready to be harvested there because of the, what the lord has done in the background just to give a little bit of an example so today i've got on the bus uh, the lord um, the Lord this morning, I was asking direction of where I go. And the Lord said, go to Torquay, which is somewhere locally to here. And then I was kind of, no, this was last night, sorry. And I was like, okay, Torquay, but my, my sister's asked to meet me. So maybe I'll meet her first and then go to Torquay. And then shortly after I received the call from my sister saying, no, I can't meet you today. So I kind of looked <laughs> up and started laughing. Okay, yeah. Lord, clearly what you want me to do is go to Torquay. Yeah. So I've gone to Torquay today. I, I was got off of a bus and, I was kind of like, what I kind of do is I know I'm meant to go to Torquay, but I want to time it perfectly to the position that God wants me to be in at the right specific amount of time. So I have that acknowledgement when I'm getting ready to really just be listening to the Lord. I make my coffee. Lord, am I leaving now? OK, no, not now. Make my coffee. Then I eat some cereal. Lord, am I leaving now? Not now, not now. And then I hear go. So that's when I'm going to get up and go. So it has to be timed perfectly to how the Lord wants it to be. I'm waiting on him just because I've heard Torquay doesn't mean I get up and put my shoes on and go to Torquay right now. Yeah. Wait on the Lord when he tells me the position to go. So I got up, I got the bus into Newton Abbott and then the bus was there going to Torquay. So I've got on the bus, I've got on, gone upstairs and I sat down and there's a wallet next to me. So I'm like, oh, a wallet. So I picked up the wallet, nice bit of money in there, all these cards and all that. So I was thinking, how am I going to find this person? So I've seen that there's a college card in there. So I've called up the college and I'm thinking these people are not going to give me any information about this guy because they're going to have data protection. So it's probably not going to work. I'm going to do it anyway because uh, I really felt that that positioning, that timing for me to be on that bus at that specific time to find that wallet was God was in that. So I've called up the, uh, the college and I'm like, I've got this car wallet here and I want to give it. They said, can you not mail it to us at Peyton? And I was like, no, nah, because there's a bit of cash in here and I'd like to personally give it to the person. It's like, can we have the college ID number? So I gave it to him. 
And I was like, is there any way that you can give him my number? They said, bear with us a minute and we'll see what we can do. So then I'm on hold for a little while. And then all of a sudden I get through to the person whose wallet it is. And I said, I've got your wallet here. It's got all the money in it. And he's overwhelmed with joy. And I said, well, I'm going to Torquay right now. But when I come back, uh, which I will in a couple of hours, I'll come and meet you. And he was like, oh, well, I can come to you now. And I said, like, listen, brother, I said, if I was going to take your wallet, I wouldn't have called this number. You've got nothing to worry about. All your money's still going to be, because I sensed, I, sensed uh, I sensed a little bit that there was a bit of worry about, you found my wallet, but you don't want to give it to me. And I just had to reassure him that you are going to get it back. Otherwise, I wouldn't have called you. So I spent some time in Torquay, which was really a profound experience in Torquay. I met a couple of people that were on the streets that were come from the same path as me and uh, got to preach to them a little bit. And they exchanged numbers and hopefully they'll be in contact. So I planted some seeds there. So... I called the guy when I was coming back and I got off the bus and when I got off the bus, I walked towards him and he was like, I said to him, I said, I bet you're glad that someone like me has found your wallet. And he was like, I'm over the moon. And then I gave him his wallet back and he's tried to give me the cash out of his wallet to me. And I said, my friend, if I wanted the cash in your wallet, I would have never have called you. I said, that's not the purpose I have here. There's a greater purpose why I've met you today. And then he's listening. I said, I want to let you know that it wasn't me that gave you your wallet back today. I know in the in, in the site that you're looking through, looking at me as a human lens, through your human lens, you're seeing a human giving you back this wallet. But it's got nothing to do with me. This is the love of God reaching out to you to give you a message right now of hope. And I don't know if there's anything that you're going for. And I sort of just went along on the path of talking to him, preaching to him a little bit. And he, he was willing to receive. He admitted to himself that there was more than meets the eye with this meat today. And then he got on his bike and drove off. He never received Christ in that moment, but there was definitely a seed that was planted. Yeah. See, he used to, me, I would have walked away from that scenario really upset that he never received Christ and thought, Lord, what more could I have done? But what we need to acknowledge in these scenarios is that is what the Lord wanted you to do. And he'll deal with the rest. Amen. You know? Yeah. And it's when we have that kind of mindset that we're not the savior. Cause I've been in that mindset before, you know, I've been in that mindset where I'm like, Lord, there's only been one soul saved today. What's going on? When really he said, how many seeds do you think you planted? You know, and when we have that mindset, that burden's lifted on us and given back to God in the rightful hands that it should be in. Cause he's the one that carries that burden. So that's kind of how my take on when it comes to, to, to ministering that, Sometimes there'd be someone that's been, been, been sowed a few times in the past and then they're ready. And the Lord will tell you when then people are ready. The amount of times where I met someone and that, the Lord said to me, he's going to give his life to Christ. And I get too excited sometimes. And I just want to say, the Lord's just said this, but I have to go along the journey of talking to him. And they, they, it gets to that point where they give their life to Christ, you know. But yeah. it's all about the Lord, the burden. And this is something, as I said to every single person at the very beginning of this call, every single person is on a progress. And it may just be that you might be in that place of burden where you feel like, oh, Lord, why aren't you using me in this way? And I'm just here to encourage you today that you, all you have to do is plant the seeds. All you've got to do is, is deliver the message. And at times the Lord will say it's time to harvest and then you should take that step. But don't ever always remember that God is not controlling God and we're to have the heart of the father. So we must acknowledge that if someone's not ready, we must not force God on him because God will never want that. God will just want to sow seeds until someone is ready to be welcomed with open arms, because that is what God loves more, that someone that comes willingly to him. Amen. No, this is so, um, this is such, um, such an important conversation, discussion, the wisdom that you're imparting from your experiences. And, you know, scripture tells us, Jesus said, cast your burdens on me because I care for you. And um, I think it says that, for my yoke is easy do you know the scripture where my burden is light and my yoke is easy is it is it something like that it's about I, like that exactly i wouldn't want to paraphrase my friend yeah so but it's so and then we, we what you're showing there the, the beautiful thing of how when the lord's speaking to, you know you're making sure that you're following his timing um i've often been you know when the lord has said paul go here today or go to this particular like the land of no or to a particular um you're going to go out to a um you know, a supermarket or something. And I've often done Facebook lives sharing the message that the Lord has said tonight, I'm going out to a supermarket. I don't know which one, um, but I'm going to a supermarket and and I'm just leaving this message now and it's going to be for the person that I meet. And and so with, with like myself, there's there's no kind of, you know, you need to be at the supermarket at 10 or 5 p.m. or something or, or whatever at this aisle. He's just giving me the, you know, go, go to which whatever it is. And then 
you know, there can be times when I'm, I'm experiencing this and I'm with my daughters, so we're going to be going out somewhere, but then like my daughters are, you know, they've not got change yet or they, don't, they want to finish watching a television programme or something. And I'm just resting in, and uh, until I feel that urge to, no, go now, the, the, just go with it. So even though we might not leave the house for two more hours, that's two more hours that are needed to get to that specific point three hours later at, at that particular junction or whatever it is. And it's just the most, I'm just sharing this because it's just the most beautiful way to live because you know that you're doing kingdom work. You, like, and, the, and just the, the, the simplicity of the life-changing message to, to, to be led in, in the spirit to go over to that one person or, you know, to, you're at the aisle in the, in the supermarket and you see someone and, you know, you, the spirit nudges you, guides you, and people might not have experienced this yet, but this is just about having, having a, a true heart's desire well, to... To surrender. Interject there quickly. Those that haven't experienced it yet, I just want to let you know that it's on offer for every single one of you. Every Amen. one of you can hear the voice of God. All it takes from you is a place of stillness, a place of spending time with Him in the secret place. See, with me and Paul right now, let's just explain it on an understanding that we could all have. Unless me and Paul spend time with each other, we're not going to understand each other and be at a communion with each other that we get each other. We would, I wouldn't understand um, Paul's body language. Like Paul wouldn't understand my body language. Or once we get to know each other on a more intimate level, I could probably give Paul a look that he'll understand what I mean. In. And see, this is all something that's developed for an intimacy with one another. And the same thing is with God. When we have an intimacy with God in the secret place, we begin to hear it more clearly. We begin to understand the sensations. We begin to understand the feelings that we have within inside of us. That sometimes we can just put it down to a random feeling inside of us, but really it could be a prompting from God. And God wants to sharpen you up in these areas, but you can only do it if you're willing to have an intimacy see with him when the door's closed and no one's looking. Mm. When the doors are closed and no one's looking and it's just you and him, that is where the father wants you to begin in. And if you want, if you're desiring to hear from him more, that's the place that you need to be in. Amen. Amen. And, and scripture tells us, come close to God and God will come close to you. And, and before this live, I went, I did a live, but an hour or so before, before we came on here. And it was, I was just describing about when I first fell in love. Um, but I was sharing it to talk about the first time I fell in love in the, you know, in the physical, in, in the, um, yeah, in, in relationship when I was 18. But then, the, what led me to share that message was um, I'd been talking about the, the oneness and the surrender and focus on Jesus, um, which is, you know, because we'd spoken, we were going to do this live. And then I went into my kitchen and I, put, I turned my Alexa on. The song was halfway through. And then the song that came on that I've, that's still on play now, because I've just kept it on repeat for the last few hours, is a song called Talking, Talking to Jesus. I love um, that. <laughs> absolutely beautiful. Um, but what I was explaining on the live about falling in love for the first time, so I was talking, first of all, from, you know, a relationship flesh, like my, uh, the mother of, of my three daughters. But then I was saying that <laughs> when you come into a relationship with Jesus, it's the same as what you've experienced for anyone that has fell in love with someone, you know, your partner, whether you're with them or not, no. But to, when, when you just can't, can't stop thinking about them. And, and you, you, you want to be with them and, and almost everything else in your life is, is secondary to that person that you've just fallen in love with, that you want to, you want to talk about them, you want to be with them, you want, you, you know, your, your heart is for them. And, and that's where I, I am now with Jesus. And it's just, it's just the most beautiful thing, because also in comparison to flesh relationships, um, not necessarily for myself, but for others maybe watching it, you've you've had your close relationships you've fallen in love but that's with someone who's flesh and spirit and and potentially people are watching this that have had breakdowns of, of relationships of, of relationships that once were pure love and, and wonderful and then things happened someone did something to the other or there was an affair or something and that relationship brought down jesus will never, ever, ever let us down. Jesus will never talk about us behind our back. He will never turn away from us. He is our comforter, our healer. He's where we get our peace from, where we get our strength from. It's just, 
it's just so, and it is there, we wait, and the scripture that says, I stand at the door and knock, and if you open the door, I'll come in, I'll sit down, and I'll have a, I'll have a meal with you and you with me. And he's a, he's a, he's a gentleman, he's, he's like, as you shared before, we have free will, it's, it's, it's all about, it's, it's just so natural and so beautiful, and it's so perfect when, when we've got to this place where I think both of us are now, this, this just this intimate, uh, growing, deepening relationship with Jesus, and, you know, like less of us, May we, you know, may we die to ourself and our own inclinations and just truly surrender to Jesus. And because we, we're still living like, we, you, yeah, you're still living a life in the flesh. So you've still got your, your relationships. I've got my children. You've got your friends. You're going to see people. People see you in the flesh, but we're being governed and led by the Holy Spirit. And it means that we can go through challenges, battles, and we've got the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. And we've got the joy of the Lord, even when like fiery darts are coming at us, we're just smiling at people and showing them love because we've got the love of Jesus flowing through us. It's just, and it's open. Like you say, it's, it's, an, it's an open door for every single person. And um, I'm just being, I'm just being led into to prayer now just for people that are watching. I'm just, I'm just going to pray a minute. Um, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you and praise you for, for my life, for, for James's life, for, for our Kingdom Connections. Father, thank you for everyone that is watching this, that is listening, that has been listening. Father, I declare and decree that everyone, everyone here that's gathered, Father, they have been chosen to be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, if you haven't already lifted the veil, we ask you to just lift the veil, Father. May the, may the scales be removed. May you just give every single one of your children the eyes to see and the ears to hear to, to, for everyone to be coming into a deepening relationship with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To, for everyone, Father, listening now under the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus, for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit, Father, the Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth. Thank you, Father, for... Thank you, Father, for setting the captives free. Thank you for breaking the chains of bondage, Father. Thank you for pulling each and every one of us out of the miry clay and onto the solid rock of you, Father. Thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for your unfailing agape love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you are where we get our peace from. Jesus said, the peace I give is a peace the world cannot give. So, Father, I just I just ask you to bless your people now listening. I, I ask that for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit and for them to be experiencing right now in this moment in this in this prayer under the sound of my voice the peace of god may everyone be experiencing right now the peace of god which surpasses all understanding which guards our hearts and minds in christ jesus thank you father thank you jesus and thank you holy spirit this is your time father and for each and every one of us we we say now in the name of jesus your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and matthew 7 7 it is written ask and we will receive so father i ask all of this in faith in the name of jesus christ of nazareth amen I just, wanna, I just really just feel led after this, just to, in the in, in the book of Exodus, Exodus, I'm not too sure what it is. There was a time that Moses was holding his hands and every time he held his hands up in the air, he found that the war was being won. So I just feel right now, every single viewer that's watching right now, I want you to, by faith, raise your hands up, in, hold your hands up to the Father to receive directly from the throne room right now. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for this opportunity to, to, to feed your sheep, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity to, to give them in some insight on what it is to be in oneness with God, Lord. I just ask right now, in the name of Jesus, that you will pour down right now a fresh anointing on every single person that is watching right now. Lord, I just ask right now from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, just soak them in the anointing right now. Completely saturate them in the oil from heaven right now, Lord. I just ask right now, Lord, that you will bring them into a place and lead them into that path that they will be in oneness with you, Lord. I just pray right now, Lord, that you will equip every single person on this live stream right now with all that they need to walk according to your will right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray right now, wherever they are in the atmosphere, that your love just continues to surround them and their hearts become pierced with your truth. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And we thank you. Amen. And amen. And brother, that... Just with what you were led to do there, the, just this by faith and just, you know, conviction, raise your arms to the air. Just, I just want to share something that I feel is really, really, really important. There's, um, I, I joined a, a ministry that's set up um, 
April, May, about April last year, because of lockdown, new ministry, online Zoom. And, you know, so I was meeting up with people from the UK and other countries. And, there, and there's a lady on the Zoom and she was a woman of God. She's, she, you know, she's worshipping in spirit and truth. And she's, you know, she's often got her arms in the air, you know, when she's sat in the living room whatever, when, when we're on the Zoom. And I was, I was kind of, I was, she, you know, probably I think she's in the late sixties, maybe early seventies, and and I was, um, I was really interested and intrigued to want to chat with her separate, you know, just to hear a bit about her story. So we'd been on these zooms like most days for a few months, and then we arranged on Messenger to have a chat. So I just had, a, I was having a video chat one to one with her, and I was saying, I was saying about, um, you know, your, your story, your testimony, and um, have you, uh, you know, is it online? Like, have you shared? And she went, oh, no, no, mine's, um, I w- I've been in faith kind of, you know, I was born and raised, just always church, family and everything like that. So, you know, there's no big, there's no big testimony. There's no big change or anything like that. And and I was like, I was listening. And, and so she was being dismissive of her journey as though there's nothing to talk about. And then, and then she just said, and then she, she said about, you know, but I was, I was going to a church for years and years. And then she said it was actually about, it was actually about two years ago. Um, like things really changed for me. And, and she said, I'd been going to this church for years. And, you know, it was just a standard Church of England, whatever, you know, church on Sunday. And she said, I, I don't know if I think she was invited to this other church one day or something. So she went in and, the, and it was already underway, the, the, the service. And it was, and she said, basically, she went in and, and there's all these people with their arms in the air. And like worshiping, there's a band at the front, and, and she would tell me. She said, "Oh, I was like, no, like I just, I just went and sat at the back, and you know, I, I just had my arms closed, and I thought there's no way I'm doing any of that. You know, she'd not, she'd just not done that. She'd been, but she'd been going to church for like maybe forty years or something. And so the worship band's on, some worship songs are playing, and and she said, she said like over the next like 20, 30 minutes, I just, I just kind of found my, found my arms like starting to relax a bit, and then." I ended up like just starting to put my arms in the air like that. And then she said, all of a sudden, I just felt this release, this release of, of like this, like this weight lifted off my shoulders. And she said it was the most joyous thing I'd experienced. And, and then I started to sing with this song and, and she said, oh, like, and then she said, since then, my, my, my walk and my relationship with Jesus has just been on another level. And it was like, that is a testimony in itself of someone that's been in faith for 40 years as, a, as what I would call as like a quiet Christian, a, you know, Christianity, cotton wool Christianity, or, you know, there's different terms for it, but, you know, the, the, um, the, the way the church has been, I'm, I'm trying not, I'm really, because of the last few hours and just really focusing on, focusing on Jesus and what God is doing, but knowing that I would say the weakness of the church, the, the planned weakness of the church and the, the church services and the lack of Holy Spirit led ministerial teaching and, you know, worshiping in spirit and in truth. This, this lady is probably like millions and millions and millions of believers around the world who have never like raised her arms up to, to worship God almighty in spirit and in truth and and then so what you were led to do then in that prayer the significance of that is it cannot be underestimated because i truly believe that there's so many christians that have been having this walk this kind of diluted walk and and this you know non true spirit-led walk in faith and and even though they read the bible and they pray and they believe in god they've maybe not been having prayers answered they've not been getting healed you know they don't really feel that that Oh, you know, they look at some of the word of God and think that can't be for me. That's not going to be for me. But what God is waiting to unlock in them is for the, their inhibitions to just be, you know, to fall off them and for them to do what you just ask people to do then in that prayer, just, you know, to, just to lift your arms up. And, and I felt it. I, I just felt the importance of it. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I've got my arms up um, quite a lot, worshipping in spirit and in truth. But, but the, I, I believe there'll be some people that would have been watching tonight at the moment and that will watch this in, in future that before you said that, they, they wouldn't have done that, even though they've been living in faith. And so I just, I just say, praise God for, for the prompting for you in the spirit to encourage people to, to do that, to, to raise, to raise your arms to the air. It's, it's, and I see it as I'm seeing it now. I'm, I'm visualizing it spiritually, where you can have chains of bondage. You can have, you can have the religious spirit. You can have a spirit of unbelief. You can have a spirit of fear, a spirit of unforgiveness. Um, you know, you might have been born, raised in the Catholic Church. You've been led to think and feel a certain way, and it's been very structured, very rigid. And so, therefore, I, I can, I'm visualizing people that have been like almost chained 
like almost like their arms and the shoulders have been chained down to just be a, a quiet kind of Bible reading, you know, very solemn Christian, yeah. uh, you know, singing some hymns. But actually the, the act of like almost just breaking the chains, you know, the spiritual chains of bondage and just to raise your arms up to the air. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. This, this is a signif- there's, a, there's, a, there's a massive significance for this. And I don't know if there's anyone watching um, that may have experienced something then, you know, just in, in terms of a weight being lifted. I would like, obviously, if there's, I'm not too sure what, because as I said, I, all I can see is the, the Zoom call. Maybe maybe if the, there's anyone that wants, that has any prayer requests that we could pray for, you know, I'm happy to to do that. I, my, listen, I, I, I know my God to be a healer time and time again. I know I haven't shared too many testimonies, but there's way too many to share. But but if there's anyone that's needing any healing, any breakthrough in their lives today, I'd lo- I'd love to 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 pray for you and watch with you. God confirm His word, you know. So if, um, if you prompted to accept that offer, I'd love to because I can't see anything. It's you that has the the platform. Yeah. Let me. You know? Well, I'll just share. So there's been yeah, with there's about there's like nine people watching at the moment. I don't know how accurate that is. Sometimes it can. Be, I think it can be misleading with with the numbers on Facebook Lives, but um, I'll ju- I'm just going to shout out to, to people that are watching. Just I'll, I'll just read through so you've got a bit of a feel. I'm just going to go back. So Brother Martin, um, he's he's been kind of connected with the ministry for the last three months. He's just really in his last three or four months just had a real significant like breakthrough in his you know in his faith. Praise God for Martin. Um, there's a sister Kathy. I don't, there's some names I don't recognise. Jamie Derwin. So I don't know if you know Jamie Derwin. Um, God bless you, brother. Um, so we've got, yeah, Kathy Dumas. We've got uh, brother Charlie. He shared his testimony with me about a week ago. He's been, you know, Kingdom Connections here. Um, Mercy Patrick. God bless you, Mercy. Jesus loves you. <laughs> Every single one of us, we're fearfully and wonderfully made in his image and we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. We've got Oscar Ferry. Um, we've got, let me have a look. We've got Margaret, sister Margaret, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She's been a warrior in the faith through, throughout her life. And she, um, her husband, her husband went to the Lord this year. He was 77. Um, I just want to share briefly on this. So we, we, we connected up kingdom connection with this lady, Margaret. She would tell me about her husband, um, 77 this year that, you know, he passed away and, um, she shared that with me. And I think it was, um, I think it was that day. It was a bit later on that day when she shared about her husband and his age. And I was just, I was out driving somewhere doing, doing the Lord's work. And, and then, and, and she was just on my mind with, with her husband and what she shared with me. And she's a lady of faith and, you know, she's at peace and everything. And just as I'm thinking about this lady and her husband that's passed and he was 77, I look up and there's a giveaway. So it's that giveaway ahead. And so you have giveaway size, you know, 100 yards ahead, 200 yards or whatever, you know, what a T junction, whatever. It was, so it said giveaway, 77 yards. When, when, when have you ever, when do they do yeah, 77 yards? Why not 80 yards? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, oh, it's just so beautiful. So that, that's Sister Margaret, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Uh, Brother Adam, uh, Brother Adam, he's been, he's been on a live with me a little bit ago and uh, he's, he's just beautifully coming into a very deepening faith in this last few months in particular. And he's, you know, he's a, he's, he tries to watch quite a lot of the lives, but I don't think, I don't think anyone can keep up with the amount of lives that, that I've ended up doing. Uh, Sister Laurel, um, praise God, Laurel and her husband, both of them too, I think in this last six months have given their life to Jesus. And, um, and they're, a, they're a beautiful demonstration of where God meets us wherever we are. And like for me and for you, um, the, the Lord broke in um, when we were broken hearted and crushed in spirit. But, but Laurel and her husband, and they've got a beautiful daughter. They just, it's, a, it's an inspirational story. I don't think she, I think she's, Laurel shared a bit on Facebook, not with, not on live with me yet. But I know so many people that have, they're not broken hearted, they're not crushed in spirit, they've got the job, they've got money in the bank, you know, they've got the family. So they've got, you know, they're, they're pretty good in life and they've not been affected too much in the last 18 months. But they're living without God, they're living without faith. And, and Laurel and her husband are a perfect, like, testimony of being like, you know, you, you know, you don't need, God meets us wherever we are. And we just, you know, to, and to go from that place of being, I can only imagine that if, if your life's already pretty good, so you've not been, you've not been stripped right back, but then the Lord breaks in and he lifts a veil and you suddenly come into the comprehension that your identity is in Christ. All it's going to do there, it's just going to, it's just going to make your life even more beautiful. 
it's just going to it's just going to um, uh, accelerate the the glorious things that are going on in your life. And obviously, yeah, if, if there's things if there's things you need to let go of that don't serve you, then obviously the, the spirit will lead you into that. But but yeah, so that's Laurel. Um, I'm just looking through now. There's um, um, uh, Kirillin Moore. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She just put praise Jesus for his power to change us from within. I think that's when you were sharing your testimony before. Um, Melanie Wicks, God bless you, Melanie Wicks. That, you know, if people are still watching, they might have dropped in and, and you know, dropped off. Uh, Rachel Innes, uh, very powerful testament. I can relate to the believing, uh, being the black sheep lies, you know, being that kind of black sheep in the family. Um, Nicola Oldworth, God bless you, sister. Nicola's been joining quite a few of the lives. Penny Winstanley, I think just recently she's connected up with the ministry and uh, mighty woman of God, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Um, and then we've got Amy Rice. God bless you, sister. Um, and then Jamie Derwin, he wrote when he said, brother, this was when you went into that prayer about lifting your arms. He said, brother, before you mentioned the raising arms, mine was already up. That brought me to tears. Amen. So, so, yeah. um, so then and then he put this gives me so much understanding of the body. I don't even know you guys personally, but the peace I felt through that prayer is evident that we are of the same spirit um rachel innes put i felt the peace too and the holy spirit really led me to watch i was about to go to sleep but the holy spirit prompted me to watch and you know everyone that's watching this right now before god created the heavens and the earth god planned for you to be here now listening and receiving these words receiving that prayer it's just it's just the most profound thing that there's no accidents there's no coincidence this is god's will this is god god is in all and works through all and yes we've got free will but god is timeless and god is the orchestrator and the the author and finisher of our faith so he knew every single person that would be on here right now hearing these words just beautiful um um he even even through hearing i feel on fire for him um jamie again rachel i've been believing i was a family black sheep for years and tonight god showed me the truth that i was believing a lie praise the lord hallelujah i i i did a live a few days ago and it was titled um in fact just bear with me because this I, I sometimes do this when i'm on a live and, and i'm we just said then see yeah, evidence of, of of proof of scripture for for what happens is, is when darkness takes a place in someone's life, the only thing that can cause that darkness to be removed is the light. And see, we must replace lies with the truth that's in the word. So what happened for you tonight, Rachel, is that there was a lie that was never replaced with the truth. And because today that you have been in the light, because it says in the scriptures, if we surround, if we live in the light that surrounds him and has unbroken fellowship with one another, that will be cleansed. And tonight I feel that truly that that lie has been replaced with the truth in your life. And not only are you just going to experience that tonight, but you're just going to see evidence of that falling off of you in the days to come. So we just thank the Lord for that. You know, we thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I've just I've just put in the comments. Uh, um, it's I, it was a, it was a, a word I was led to, to share recently and it was. I just titled it, if, you, if you've been misunderstood, mocked, lied about, cast out, ridiculed or worse, this is a message from the Lord to you. And um, it's because actually the, a beautiful thing, I, I'm just going to share this now. I was led about a week or so ago um, to a place I parked up and I parked up before and, and a few beautiful things had happened. I'd met a few people and I was going to do a live and I did a Facebook live, sat in my car. And whilst I was sat in my car, I looked to my right and the house to my right, at the bottom was a rainbow. And it was I, that night I was doing a very significant live. And I think the live, it was the one, it was titled 2000 Years, The Profound Patience of God, because God knows and sees all and he's allowed, all, you know, the sin of man to just permeate through society and all the, all the fabric of, of, of society for 2000 years. So I was, I was doing that. Um, and, and then I saw this rainbow in the bottom window and it was just God's little nudge, you know, prom, like all my promises are, are yes and amen. And then I looked up to the top window and it was a little hanging down in the window was a, was a sheep, a long sheep. And it was, it was a white sheep. And, um, and that, that feeling and that emotion for people watching that, that maybe have felt cast out and the black sheep, actually what can often be the case is this is the one that's deemed as a black sheep is the one that's, that's, that's got a bigger calling upon their life and is going to be the one that that breaks that you know that the lord breaks in and chooses to be the one 
that that's set apart as to be the light the the the, the light bearer you know the, the the glory carrier for that family and um you know yeah in this last two months two, last two years when i started to speak out and share the good news and share miracles and shine light into darkness my word um did did, did things come against me but as jesus said you know i was i think what well, scripture that says like i i was hated in the world if, if people hated me if people, if people hate you they hated me first and we know that we live in this world but not of this world and we're sent out as sheep among wolves but as as we as i often am led to share that this so important for us all to comprehend that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and no matter what antichrist spirit no matter what what things are going on to know that that god's hand is upon you and his plans for each and every one of us are plans for good and not for disaster to give us a future and a hope that we can go out against them tomorrow the battle belongs to the lord and he has gone before us and and whatever things do come our way the trials and tribulations god has allowed us to go through those things because he's teaching us things he's is revealing things in us that we need to let go of. Like it, it might lead us into a situation if we, if say we battle with anger for, for, through our life, um, you know, our old wineskins that we've always had like an anger issue, but now we're in Christ. And as you said before, brother, that it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't straight away. Everything doesn't just drop off you. So, so if you've still got that bit of a, a spirit of anger inside of you, God will, God will lead you into a place, into a circumstance where something is going to rile your anger up. And then God is teaching you in that moment that no, you can't get angry. You, that's not that's not you. That's not from Christ. That's your old self, and it's need, it needs to die. So, whatever trials and tribulations if people are going through uh, that are watching now at the moment, know that there is a lesson in there, and know that God is teaching you something. It may be for some people that He just wants you to draw closer to Jesus because you've not really been following the will of the Father, and so your life has been a bit messed up. You've, you've got crooked paths, and you've been struggling. You've been feeling fear. You've not been reading the Word. You've not been worshiping. And and the and the more we can shift our eyes onto Jesus and to focus on the Word and to be in that in that secret place, as you said, brother. That's where that's where our life starts. To, we start to see that God is straightening out the crooked paths. And, and he's bringing us that peace and, and the joy of the Lord as well. So, so yeah, just pray, praise the Lord for, for who he's bringing onto this live. Um, so as we're saying, so there's uh, brother Martin, he's put, um, my wife Petra is suffering with her back. So we can pray for Martin's wife, Petra. Um, um, there's a few, Sheila's if, if Martin's with his wife right now, that he's, he can be the vessel that the Lord uses as he places his hand on her. Could we, could we do that? Maybe. Obviously, we'll ask Martin that, and obviously the response is not going to come immediately when we bomb, and then when Martin replies, we can move into that, maybe. So, let, yeah, let me just share here. So, because, yeah, Brother Jamie said, can we please take a moment to pray for Martin's wife? So, absolutely. So, Martin's saying she's in bed. He's just put here that she gave, she gave a care job up because she wouldn't have the poison, but got a job in a warehouse, um, but it was too much for her back as she has spinal fusion. But God has answered our prayers and she now has got a job at the local Tesco, but it's taking it out on her back. So, so yeah, so she's in bed at the moment. But what we can do, what I sometimes do, brother, is um, I, I audio record prayers that I'm led to do. And then I send the prayer to, to that person on Messenger so they can listen back to it or they can play it to their loved one or something. You know, it might be for a grandchild or something like that. And, and there's, and you know, so it's there as something to go back to because of, you know the significance of god god is a man of his word and scripture tells us that we can pray for anything and if we have faith we will receive it so um so we can yeah i don't if, I'll, I'll start my audio recording so i can record it for, for martin and i can send it to him and he can play it to petra um so he can be with petra maybe in the morning or something and he, they can you know so they can receive the prayer again and he can you know have his hands on her back or something so um, shall I start audio recording and then do you want to pray, brother? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, I'll start recording. Uh, right. Okay. What's her name? Sorry, brother. Uh, Pet Petra. So it's Martin and Petra. Pet Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for Petra and Martin, Lord. We just thank you for their hearts and their desire to know you more. We just command right now in the name of Jesus, pain be ceased right now in Jesus' name. We just command right now new muscles, new ligaments, new tendons, new joints right now, complete restoration, fireful right now. We just command in the name of Jesus, pain 
go back, be restored in Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank Amen. you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that by the stripes on your back, Petra is healed. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Petra's faith that you have instilled in her. By her faith, she will be healed in the name of Jesus. We can pray for anything. And if we have faith, we will receive it. Father, we pray all of this. We stand in agreement alongside each other. We stand in agreement and we pray all of this in faith, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Praise God there, brother, because what... Not sure where Brother Paul's gone. Oh, I'm back. That was. Um, I'm not sure what happened then. <laughs> it's, happened, it's happened a few times recently. It just literally closed down, but yeah, it's still going. The recording's still going. Praise God. Um, what I've just received from that, let me just pause. Let me just stop this audio. Hallelujah, brother, because. Sometimes in my prayers and, you know, as the spirit leads, um, it's, you know, my prayers can, you know, if it's praying for someone for healing, uh, they can be not too long, but certainly longer than that. But what, what I just, the Lord spoke to me as you did that prayer. And I just praise God for this, that the Lord just said, Paul, this is a, you know, it's like a demonstration of the, the, the simplicity of just stripping the prayers right down and taking the authority, which, which you did in that prayer and just, you know, less is more. And I just, I just praise God because I know from going forward, when I'm called to pray for people, there's going to be less is more. And, and that's, so I just praise God for the way that the spirit led you to pray then for Petra, just take the authority. Knowledge, right? Is Christ has given us the authority over all the powers of darkness to trample on scorpions and snakes. And see, we must understand that we have been given the authority. It's important that we understand we haven't got to ask Jesus to heal the sick. we got to tell the sickness to move on because we've been given the authority. So it's important that we take the authority that's been given to us and don't ask for authority that we've already been given. Thank you, brother. That, that's, uh, you know, this is, this is speaking to me. This is... Um, because actually like seeing the manifestation of healings and praying in this way with all the authority and just, you know, commanding that the spirits that have, you know, that have led to these afflictions, whether it's physical, mental. Um, I just, yeah. It's just beautiful. The way you just described it there and explained it, that it's um, I, I've been talking more in the last few months about the power and the authority and in, in my, in, in my spirit led prayers, when I'm praying for people on lives, I've been, I've felt a real significance of, of asking our father to increase significantly in, increase um the the you know our brothers and sisters their their own faith for them to truly start to understand the authority that they have in the spiritual realm but you know this is this tonight this is for me i'm i'm like uh, this is the lord working through you um into my life as well because you know i'm there's i've there's still a long way to go for me well no praise god no there isn't a long way to go no i just need to i just need to um adapt the prayers and just and just follow some of the leadings of, of how you you've been praying because of where the lord has got you to now this this such this place of such purity in your prayers and, and the power and the authority that you have and it's just no nonsense isn't it it's just satan like you, you're under our feet get get behind the satan and just it's done it's finished Amen. And it's, yeah praise god so i'm just looking now to see if there's any other what anyone else looking to pray um also oh, amy rice do you know amy i think she she said she was on your page and mm -hmm. um, i just found you today brother paul glad to be here thank you for sharing um I'll, this is just praise god for, for what god is doing because what i'm going to do from when we finish this i'll i'll download the video um you know the live um get it onto the youtube channel get it onto the ministry website and the the ministries the stories the word the messages from the lord the testimonies that i'm just a few nights ago i'd not i'd not slept i've been up all night just in the spirit doing lives and whatever and then half seven in the morning a sister i was led to just message someone messaged me and i just messaged back saying do you fancy a video call 
we started to do a video call within about two minutes. The Lord was saying, Paul, like, just go live, share, because she, she began to share a testimony. And I ended up being on live with them for three hours whilst he was sharing the testimony. It was like a mother and daughter, miracle, miracle testimony that the daughter's a walking miracle. She shouldn't be alive. And it's just like, I just love what the Lord is doing with these. Like we weren't planning three, you know, until you came on that live three or four hours ago, we weren't planning to do this live. And now here we are. Um, just praise God, praise God for these, for, for what, for what the Lord is doing. Um, so we've got another prayer request. Praise the Lord. This is, so this is Sister Margaret. Uh, I mentioned um, Sister Margaret before, I think. Uh, so, um, and it's her, can you please, please pray for my son, Gary, um, his left hip and knee. So, um, so yeah, he's got, he's got some like physical, um, physical affliction. Let me just share this to, um, let me just, just one sec. I just want to share this, Martin. Uh, one sec. I'm just, I'm just sending this prayer to Martin um, oh. while they record it, just, just so I don't forget. Um, um, right, so Brother Martin, um, yeah, you should have that, you should get, you should get that prayer through shortly on Messenger. So, so yeah, so this is Sister Margaret and it's prayers for her son, Gary, um, his left hip and knee. So um, I'll, I'll let you lead again, brother, if, uh, yeah. We thank you for your tremendous power, for this is not a power of man, but of you, Lord. For it says in your scriptures, not by power, but not by might, but by my spirit, say of the Lord. So we just command right now, hip, be restored right now. All bones be back in place in Jesus name knee or ligaments or tendons right now be healed complete restored right now life in Jesus name I command all pain be ceased immediately right now in Jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. hallelujah praise the Lord thank you Jesus praise the name of the Lord um uh, praise the Lord. Uh, Martin's got the prayer. Um, Sister Margaret, let me just um, save this. I'll just get this sent over. For, for, um, and then um, prayer for... Because this, uh, also doing this, um, which is a bit, this isn't usual, kind of, you know, recording prayers, sending prayers to people. Obviously, the Lord has heard the prayers. This is this is about testifying. This is about capturing the prayers that are going to lead to breakthroughs, that are going to lead to healings, that are going to lead to, 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 um, to people being able to glorify God and say, on this day, on the 30th, you know, 30th of November, um, I asked for prayers for, for me or for you know, a family member. This is a prayer, you know, the day later or the morning after or, you know, seven by seven days later, you know, healed or, you know, breakthrough. And it's just to have these prayers captured. I just, this is to glorify God. It's, um, it's not conventional, but God isn't conventional. God is doing a new thing. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken and we just give God all the glory. So um, let me just, um, let me just get this prayer to, um, to sister Margaret. Sister Margaret, you should, um, well, Gary should have that, um, that prayer on, on his uh, messenger. Praise the Lord. So, um, so Sister Laurel that I mentioned earlier, um, she just said, can you please pray for Andrew? So uh, Andrew's her husband, um, as he has severe uh, psoriasis. Um, God bless you. This is an amazing life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All glory to God for 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 what he's doing through each of us so so yeah it's uh, laurel's laurel's husband um andrew with severe i'm not sure what that is what is psoriasis so um from what i understand it's uh, it's like a skin condition um so it's like it's 
you know, where you might have like flaky skin or, you know, dry skin, flaky skin, it's, it's, it's a lot more progressed than that. It's, you know, you can have it on different areas of your, area of your body. So it can look, I think it can look like eczema. So it's, it's, skin. it's skin. It's a skin. Yeah. It's a skin, um, skin affliction. Yeah. Yeah. And what's his name? Um, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for Andrew, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that you love him very much, Lord, and it is your will to restore him today. We just command right now, skin, be reformed right now. Skin, be renewed right now. Right Holy now, God. any disease, be ceased in Jesus' name. We just Holy ask right now a forming of skin. Fresh skin, be formed on him right now, completely as you intend him to be, Lord. We just pray right now in the name of Jesus. Anything that hindering right now, we break it off at the root in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Father, I stand alongside my brother's prayer there. And Father, I believe that you are also um, you are also asking here for, for Sister Laurel and, and Andrew to we the prayers captured, but to capture uh, to, to to photograph to to capture what over this next few days, over this next week, as as the miracle healing through Jesus is is manifest in Andrew's life with the psoriasis being okay. dramatically and and profoundly going away. Father, there is going to be a physical manifestation. Um, over this over these coming days over this next week and father you are you are calling laurel and andrew to to capture it to to photograph things whether it's day by day to uh, video capture father just praise the lord thank you father for this for, for this testimony because father you are moving us and you are moving your children around the world into a place where you are going to be manifest the manifestation of miracle healings as you have been sharing with me in the last few months father these words that that the <laughs> That we are that we are the new disciples, and that what is what is described and explained in the, in the Gospels and in Acts of the Apostles is nothing compared to what you are going to be pouring out and the miracles that are going to be manifest across the earth, Father. That you are that you are already beginning to to bring about, Father. And we just give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor for for, for you answering prayers, for the miracles, for the manifestation of miracles, and and Father, for what you are going to be doing when. As people have been healed, as as healings uh, uh, will be will be manifesting out in out in areas of public and Father, just as we as we read in in the Gospels and in Acts, there's, there's going to be people from towns and villages coming over to 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 see what's going on, to see the miracle for their own for for themselves, and the, and the, they themselves will be asking for for prayers for healing, and and they'll be healed in the name of Jesus, and we just. We just glorify you for what you are doing, Father, and and you are you are you are you have you are only just getting started, Father. You are only just getting started, and and oh, praise the Lord, Hallelujah for this ministry, for everything that you are doing through this ministry and through and through me and through my family, through through all all of us connected to this ministry, Father. That praise the Lord, Hallelujah, I, Father. We are expecting we are expecting for for you to move in such profound ways that are going to leave people quite simply in awe and wonder. You're going to be leaving people open mouthed, absolutely open mouthed, and we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor, Father, because you are worthy of all praise. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you did on the cross. What you did on the cross. You are, Jesus. You are the name above all names. You are, you're, you're the name above every single, every single man-made label of any health affliction, whether mental or physical. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, because the chains of bondage are going to be broken in the name of Jesus. There is going to be such a manifestation of healings, of, of breakthrough, of, of miraculous doctor's reports. Oh, hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your, thank you for radical healing. And thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. Amen. I feel led at this point. Let me just see if anyone's come on. Um, sorry, this is a prayer for Laurel and Andrew. Let me just um, share this with them. Um, praise the name of the Lord. For anyone else that's watching, if the if just come forward, just just put in the comments if you'd like if you'd like to receive prayer. This is just this is the Lord's time. We're not we're not. It's oh, I'm just. <laughs> 
I'm just, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit at the moment. God bless you, Maureen McGinley. God bless you, sister. May the, may the Holy Spirit come upon you now, sister Maureen. God bless you. Um, this is prayer for Andrew. Let me just send this over to Andrew, to, to Laurel. So, um, what I understand is uh, it's like a skin condition. Um, so it's like... One sec. Um, yeah, pray God. So I've just sent um, Laurel. I've just sent you that prayer on Messenger. Um, Martin's just put he's going to he's going to finish now because he's got to be up at five in the morning. So we'll watch the rest tomorrow. However, the Lord leads. It's we, this is a Lord's time. Um, um, Margaret has received the prayer for um, for a son for for. for uh, for Gary, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Um, Maureen is asking, Maureen's saying that she'd like prayer. So yeah, Maureen, just um, yeah, just put in the comments what you would, what just specific, what you would like to pray for, what, what you would like us to pray for. Um, what I may do, um, just dependent on when Maureen shares that, um, there is a, I've, I've been led to in these last few days and it was through doing a live and it was talking about, um, I think what I was talking about, it was, um, where did the word, basically the word radical, the word radical kind of came, came into this live a couple of days ago, two nights ago. And um, I, don't, I think it was, I think it was about, because I, I did a message about like R&R. &R. So R&R &R in the world, it stands for like rest and relaxation. But actually, through a sister in Christ, Anna Marie, she she put the words in on, onto my spirit of um, of restoration and reconciliation. You know, when it comes to like broken family relationships. So I was I was doing a message the other day um, about R and R, but then it was another message actually, and it was about um, R rated. So that was the title of the video, and obviously R rated from a film point of view or music is you know something that's a bit. Um, you know, over 18 certificate or whatever, extreme. But I was talking about R rated for, for God um, and like radical and like how God is he's moving into a place where we're going to be seeing radical manifestations, ma radical healings, radical, um, radical um, repentance of sins, radical revival, radical refreshing of the Holy Spirit. So I was doing a live the other night and there was people watching. Um, and, and they were commenting like with radicals, you know, radical this, radical that. And it was building up and building up. And then someone mentioned you'll have to you'll have to bring them together or something, or just like put them onto a post or something, you know, like or like so I was thinking it was going to be a, a bullet point list of radicals, you know, radical revival, radical faith, radical favor, radical provision, various, you know, various things. But then I was led to I was led to praise all oh, glory, praise and honor to God to do it into um, God's radical letter to each of us, his children. So I've, I've shared this letter, I think I think it was on the live, I've shared it a few times in this last 24 hours, I've read this letter out. So um, let me just look at, so I, I wanna read that out because it's, it perfectly fits with where we're at and, and what, we, what we're speaking about and how the Lord is moving and he's only just getting started. So, um, so Maureen, Sister Maureen, she's asking for, um, she just she's asking for discernment whether to move to Florida or Texas. So um, so yeah, you know wherever God's will is going to be done. Um, so let me just let me just um, I'll, I'll capture the prayer anyway because Maureen, whatever happens at wherever you end up being, it's going to be it's going to be glorious. Uh, we just speak it and declare it now. So we'll pray for yeah, join it. So Maureen, do you, do you want to start just start? Oh, for it, it, brother say you go for it brother um let me just set so it's what is it florida or texas um heavenly father we just thank you and praise you for sister maureen's life father she, you know right now she's at a crossroads of either going to florida or texas father we just ask in the name of jesus that whether it's through this prayer now whether whether you whether you just speak to me now and um <laughs> florida um Maureen, I believe the Lord wants you to go to Florida. Um, there's, the, praise the Lord, hallelujah. There's so, I, I have some uh, brothers um, in Florida that have testified, including Terrell Perry. 
um, who battled with his mental health for over 20 years. He was diagnosed bipolar. He's been set free by Jesus, absolute set free on no medication, at least with the peace of God, which passes all understanding. But also I understand Florida as a state because of the governor there, the freedom that's there. Maureen, I believe that the Lord wants you to go to Florida because of the freedom that's there for, for how you how will be able to use you for kingdom purposes. We just give God all the glory, praise and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for Sister Maureen. Thank you for, thank you for her life. Thank you for everything that you have brought her through, Father. And thank you for the calling upon her life. I believe that, that there is a huge calling upon her life and that you are going to be doing mighty, mighty works through, through, through her hands and feet of Maureen, through her, through her prayers. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We just ask you, we just lift up Maureen now. We just ask you to, to, to fill her now to overflow with your Holy Spirit, to, to, to just do something beautiful. And if there is anything that needs to be broken off, anything that she needs to let go of, Father, because of this move that's coming up, if there's anyone she needs to let go of, in order for it to be free, to walk in freedom and to, and to walk truly um, onto, onto the narrow path, then Father, just uh, through your spirit and through her prayers, reveal, reveal whatever she needs to let go of, whatever is remaining in Sister Maureen of her old wineskins. Father, whatever it is, just reveal it to her so that she can just come into a pure, total, total deep relationship with her Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and that through through your Holy Spirit, you will she will hear from you firsthand. And, and going forward, she, she won't even, for herself, for her own circumstances, she will just come to you, Father. She will come to you and that you will speak to her through, through, uh, through the purity of her heart and mind and through her deepening relationship with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And so may this be, uh, may this be the last time that, that Maureen um, feels the need to, to go out to others to pray because she will just hear directly from you moving forward and she will just hear from you and she will go she will follow she will be obedient because your ways are perfect father your ways are perfect you straighten out our crooked paths and we just give you all the glory praise and honor thank you father thank you for sister Maureen thank you for her life and thank you for leading her and I believe it's it's uh, you're, you're leading her to Florida and in Florida Maureen is going to flourish. I declare and decree in Florida, Maureen is going to flourish. She's going to flourish filled with the Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory, all the praise and all the honour, Father, for, for Sister Maureen's life and for everything to come. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. 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 And I'm not sure if this, this place in Florida, Tampa, means anything to you. Um, yeah, I'm just, just here in Tampa. Tampa. Not sure if that means anything to you. Know, it's an area in Florida. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all that I felt. Feel that the Lord is saying to me the, the word temper, if that means anything to you. Hallelujah. I, I think, brother, there is Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay, Florida. I think it's, it's one of the key areas. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, sister. Um, Sister Maureen, oh, let me send. Um, let me just send this through to you. So again, testifying and glorifying in God's perfect time when, when glorious things happen, uh, Maureen, for you with with where you with where God takes you. Hallelujah. Uh, just one sec. Prayer for. Um, prayer for one. Bear with me. Morning. Morning. Sister Mori, um, I've just sent that, that prayer is just going over now. Um, so yeah, praise the Lord. Um, so Pauline uh, Findlay, she's just asked me, I ask that you pray for all those that are suffering around the world due to the oppression that they are, that they are under. So just before I share, just before we, we move into prayer for, for that, there's really something really beautiful. My, my youngest daughter, um, Amelia Four, we, when it's bedtime, 
she's with me uh, half of the time, the other half she's with her mum. And when she's with me, bedtime, you know, brush teeth, toilet and stuff, and then get in bed, cuddles. And then um, I just ask her, who do you want me to pray for? So like for the last, pretty much for the last 12 months, I've asked her that. And, you know, she wants me to ask for, you know, she wants me to ask and, you know, and it can be praying for her sisters, praying for her mum, praying for me, pray, praying for, uh, there's sometimes been a school teacher's, praying for children at school, praying for a nan and granddad and stuff like that. Um, what the, I'll just share this. This is just, this is an interesting one. Tom Grennan, for a, for a month or two, she was asking me to pray for Tom Grennan. <laughs> so I was praying for Tom Grennan like, with my youngest daughter. But in this, last, in this last month or so, and then in particular, like in the last like week, when I've asked her, who do you want me to pray for? She just says, uh, pray for everyone in the world, daddy. And so I just do a, you know, I do a prayer for everyone. And, and we know that God has got the whole world in his hands, but we know that we know the sin of man and we know that we know the devastation to, to life that, um, that has been caused and, and the, and the oppression that people have been under and the injustices and things. So I'm, um, I, I'm just setting the scene with this really, that I, I've been led a lot in this last 12 months, um, I've not, I'm in the spirit, I've not been, I've not been led to focus on book of revelation and, and the rapture and tribulation and, and all the things that are kind of described in, in revelation. I've, I've so often been led into the early Psalms, Psalms one, Psalms two, Psalms five, Psalms seven. And, and there's, and they filled, they, they, they filled with, with prophecies and, and the prophecies that haven't yet been fulfilled because they talk so much about the justice being served and that, you know, the oppressors, the kings and rulers, uh, you know, about submitting to God's royal son or else he'll become angry and that you'll be, this is Psalms 5, um, you know, submit to God's royal son um, or for else he will become angry for his anger flares up in an instant and you will be destroyed in the midst of all your activities. And there's so many Psalms and, and Isaiah and Proverbs um, talking about the, you know, the oppressed, the widows, the orphans and, you know, justice being served and, and that's what led me to do that live um, about three weeks ago, like 2000 years, the profound patience of God. It's, it's the most profound thing that God, is, God knows and sees all. And yet God has allowed all this darkness and evil to, to permeate and for the world to now be seen in this last 18 months, the, 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 um, the severity and the depth and the damage caused by sin. By, by separation from God and, and, and caused by the love of money, which is a root of all evil. So just, I just say, praise God, hallelujah, for, for his divine plan for humanity. And, um, and so, yeah, I just, I just wanted to set the scene really. I don't know, brother James, if, if you'd like to, um, if, you, if you'd like to just, if you've been, if you're convicted to just pray for, you know, pray for the a big, a big prayer for pray for the oppressed around the world. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord. We just intercede right now on the behalf of those that are receiving persecution, Lord, the ones that are oppressed, Lord, those people around the world that that are so far from you, but yet has not had an opportunity to know you, Lord. We just ask right now, Lord, that you will send the saints to cause a revival, a stirring up in the spirit for these yeah. scenarios. We just pray right now, Lord, that you will allow this prayer that proceeds from my mouth right now to cause legs to begin to move towards those that are being oppressed. Lord, we just cry out right now for revival in these areas, Lord, revival in the times with the people that are suffering right now, Lord. We just ask right now, Lord, that you will cause a stirring in the atmosphere of the spirit. Send down your angels right now to minister to those that yeah. are saved. Lord, to push them into them revival settings, Lord, that they will begin to group up. Lord, we just ask right now, Lord, send the willing ones, send the ones that are available to go, Lord, the ones that hear your voice in a clear way, that when you say go, they shall go. Lord, I just pray right now will cause a lighthouse effect to happen in the spirit right now that yeah. there will be a beam towards those that are oppressed to lead them into a direction lead them into a scenario in a group they will begin to feel your presence and cry out for repentance oh lord we have seen it times to come we have seen it in mighty revivals of past lord and we just cry out and declare right now that this shall come to pass once again for it says in your scripture that you are the same yesterday that you are today and that you are forever lord so we just Amen. ask 
now you do your word again. You do your, your, your revival again in these periods of the times that we are Amen. right now, these perilous times that we are in. We just cry out for your presence to sweep the nation in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Father, Father, your word tells us it is written. Matthew 7, 7, ask and you will receive. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that for those around the world that are oppressed, that are under persecution, that have been separated, that have suffered injustices, whether they are children, whether they're adults, whether they are parents. Father, I just ask in the name of Jesus that, that you give them each an encounter, an encounter with Jesus, whether it's through a dream or a vision or a search, circumstance or situation, bringing someone into their life or just giving them a vision. Father, you are the God of miracles. You are the way maker. You are the light in the darkness. Father, and we can ask for anything in the name of Jesus. And by our faith, we will receive it. So, Father, we are just asking you to do, to, to do your will, to hear our prayers and to, and for people that are in so much darkness, to suddenly see the light of Jesus shining into their life and that they will know for the rest of their days with whatever, whatever comes their way, Father, wherever they are around, around the world, they will, they will know that the Lord, our God, is with them. He's for them, not against them, and that, that they have been chosen, not forsaken, and that they will have no fear. In spite of whatever they may be going through, Father, they will have no fear. They will have no fear. They will have your perfect love through a miraculous, profound encounter. Just like, Father, when you, when you strike down on Saul on the road to Damascus and you took Saul out of darkness and into the glorious light of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, in an instant, suddenly in an instant, his life was changed. You brought him into the light and we just give you all the glory, praise and honour, Father, for what you are doing, for the radical revival for the radical outpouring of your holy spirit for the radical transformation of people's lives for the radical justice you are bringing father we give you all the glory all the praise and all the honor in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i pray amen radical radical so on this, I was sharing about the radical, this, and, and I've been led to do God's radical letter to you, to me, to, to all of us. And, and I'm just, I feel it's, I feel convicted in the spirit now that now is the right time for me to just read through this, um, this letter. So this just, we just give God all the glory, praise and honor. This is, this is Holy Spirit inspired letter. I truly believe that, that there is, um, I don't know if you've seen this or you've, I've, I've I don't know if you've heard me read this out brother there's um there's god's love letter and basically it's it's all from scripture so it's a love letter beautifully written but it's all scripture so you can just read it as a letter or you can read it by scripture and so this is similar it's similar in that way um, but it's not all based on scripture but it's holy spirit led and inspired and and i i truly believe that this letter all glory to God is, is going to end up being heard and, and read and used by people around the world. And it's, it's going to, when people hear it, that people will receive it, that the Holy Spirit will be upon them and that they will gain themselves like revelations of, of what God is doing in their life and what God is going to do in their life. And people will be led to tears. And, and maybe, you know, if it's God's will, that if, if anyone that's watching this, if, as I'm reading through this, if you know if, if if you're brought to tears you know share you know share in the comments if you if you get a tingling feeling if you're feeling a weight lifted off you if, if you're suddenly feeling something different um share in the comments because this is the holy spirit moving and and it, it, we're just testifying and glorifying god and and that's what that's what we're called to do to share to testify so let me just read this out now because this is i, I believe this is going to bless many people both now and in, and in the days, weeks and months and, and years to come. My children, I have called you by name to have a radical relationship with my son, Jesus Christ. Through your radical relationship, you are going to see a radical restoration of your family relationships, along with radical restoration of what was seen as dead and buried. There is going to be a radi radical rattling of the dry bones 
as you will see that I am raising the dead to life. You are going to be seeing radical results in your prayers, including radical reports from doctors. I am preparing a radical outpouring of my Holy Spirit upon the earth. Through all this, I will be giving you radical rest, preparing you to have a truly radical role in your prayer life. You are going to be seeing a profound radical resurrection of the lost sheep. And I am going to be giving you radical revelations about what I am doing across the earth. You are mine and I have given you radical freedom through my son, Jesus Christ. There is going to be a radical revealing of the works of evil. And there are going to be radical demonstrations of my glory, my provision and my miracle working powers. My children, have no doubt in your mind that what I have chosen you to experience and be a part of is the most radical revival the world has ever seen. For this, I have given you radical rights in the spiritual realm to destroy demonic altars, strongmen and curses that have been on your family and other people's families. The radical reality of the world and what I am doing is that this is a radical dress rehearsal for the book of Revelation. There is a radical reckoning coming to those who have been planning and doing evil. And through this process, you are going to see a most awe-inspiring radical harvest. There are going to be more and more radical baptisms. There is going to be a huge amount of people displaying radical repentance of their sins. And through all this, you, my children, are going to be radically rejoicing. You are standing on me, the radical rock of all ages. And through the radical resurrection of my son, Jesus Christ, I have given you radical power and authority over all schemes and devices of the enemy. I am making radical callings for people who have been living in sin and darkness, and they will become radical leaders in the places I place them. I'm going to be pouring out radical blessings to you and my faithful followers who are all part of my radical army that I planned for before I created the heavens and the earth. Be prepared for a radical outpouring of financial provision for those whom I have called to use my storehouses of wealth to bring my children back home. You will see that I am making a radical realignment of the distribution of wealth throughout the world. You are going to be experiencing a radical refreshing in the Holy Spirit, a radical resurgence and rejuvenation through the flowing rivers of living waters I am pouring out. This will bring you into a place of a truly radical renewal of your entire being, as I have called you to become one of my radical children of God. You are going to be seeing radical rebirths of non-believing family members, for I, the Lord, have spoken. Get ready to see more and more radical healings, miracles, signs and wonders. I am radically repairing broken hearts and minds and broken relationships. There is going to be a radical release of my Holy Spirit and the world will see that I am doing a radical rebuild of the broken systems and pillars of the world. My people who have turned their back on me are going to experience radical re-encounters with my son, Jesus Christ. My people are going to be putting in place radical restraining orders over Satan in my course of heaven. Radical change is coming to the earth. Radical truth is coming to the earth. Radical love is coming to the earth. Radical revival is coming to the earth. My radical reset is taking place right now. Remember, my children, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in my image and I will never leave you nor forsake you. Go out against them tomorrow because the battle is not yours to fight. The battle belongs to the Lord. Now go, be radical, my children. Be radical and expect me to be radical. Praise the Lord. Jamie, Jamie's just shared here that my feet started to tingle from my heel to my neck just as I was drifting off to sleep. Amen. The tangible Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
uh, brother, I think we may um, we may wrap up there. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah! God bless every everyone that's been watching, that's sharing. Um, all glory, praise, and honor to God for, for 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 His plans for our lives and for how He's using us now and and for everything for everything that He's He's preparing us for. We have, as the Scriptures tell us, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has conceived what the Lord has got planned for those that love Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. God bless you, um, your family, um, you know, everyone that's connected, everything that you're doing. May you be blessed. Go out against, go out again tomorrow and uh, just, yeah, praise and glorify our Father in heaven. Amen. Amen, brother. It's been an absolute honour to be on here and uh, edify the sheep that, that you've got in your ministry right now. And, uh, yeah, blessings to all of you that have watched. And I hope that you've truly been blessed by the word of the Lord today hallelujah hallelujah praise god right uh we'll be i'm sure we'll be connected up again soon as as the lord leads amen amen bye-bye bye-bye